Um, who deals with contracts? Read, write, sign. Hopefully if you sign, you read. Great. It's terrible, right? Universally. Pretty terrible experience. Um, software, too, has some of those problems, right? What, does, what works all the time? What works great but doesn't steal your data? Um, what installs first time, every time? It's pretty terrible. Um, my name's Kyle. I'm out of Oakland, California. I write contracts in software. Um, to give you a sense, um, open forms I have for uh, open source contracting or selling a web service or 16 NDAs that meet every use case I can think of without using strange archaic language. Um, let me show you some of that. Oh god, I hope there's an internet. There is no internet. There we go. So here is a big long contract. This is for developers who want to do open source work as well as proprietary work for the clients. Irrelevant. Um, it's nice and pretty. And it's on the internet. And I can send links to it. Um, there are little notations in the margin, hopefully not too many of them, that are yelling at me because, as usual, when I write contracts, I fall back on legal language, or I say things long when I should say it short, or I say things that Ken Adams in his book says you should never say, or I define a term and never use it, or I use a term and never define it, or I reference a section that doesn't exist, screw up the formatting, the whole nine yards, which make your contracts experience so lovable and enjoyable every time I work with you. Um, the obvious answer to that is software, and I am by no means the first person who this has occurred. In fact, I've seen references going back into the 60s for people who had this pretty well figured out. Um, figured out, published, usable are different things. There are many commercial options you can get that are available. I have written one called Common Form. What do I want? If you care about contracts, if you have to care about contracts but don't really care about contracts, I want to work with you. I want to work with you in the same way I work with my nerd friends. And some of that goes under the banner open source. Some of it is just that we will help each other out. And there is code out there that I've worked on with seven, eight, nine people I've never met that has no license on it that we're all using. And it's this collaborative process that's facilitated by tooling and an approach to how we build contracts that's different from the way we build contracts at law firms. Uh, when I say I want to work with you, I don't want to hire you. I don't want you to hire me. I want us to get along and move the state of the art regardless of that. What does that mean? We have some big hurdles. The first is we need a way for computers to talk about contracts. Microsoft Word is where content goes to die. You can copy it, and you can paste it, and you can move it from graveyard to graveyard, and it, it lives this kind of zombie life thanks to the C and the V key, which get pretty shiny on your keyboard when you practice contract law. But that's not good enough for sharing little bits. What I wish I'd done as an associate starting off very early on was put every little piece of language that I liked on a note card and told myself where it came from and how it was built so that I could slot it in. And that would be faster than copying and pasting and not realizing what I should have changed but didn't. Or pulling a dusty form in a fit of expedience, which is the whole practice of law, and trying to make it fit the client. So common form is a tiny little language for expressing data in ways that computers can understand. And it makes it really stupid simple to write things like, let's go through Ken Adams' manual of style and contract drafting, note every single term he says is bad sauce, and point it out every time I use it, or every time I says here as, or where in before. I'm getting better at that. It still happens every once in a while. When you have structured data, and that is what we're looking at, we're looking at a contract in structured data. If I replace common form, sorry, common form with the API, I get JSON. It's dead simple to work with. We've been there. Document assembly, ticked. I can give you command line tools. You can do what I do. When a client comes to me and says, I need an option packet again, actually, I need nine of them. I can just spit them out, right? Command line tools are available for that. You can do it online, as we've seen. And this is editable. You can go in there and do whatever you want. You can move stuff around. You can define terms that will yell at you when you fail to do that. Sorry, somebody else's computer. It's an editor. OK, we've been there. I could show you the same thing in Vim, in a terminal that the nerds use, right? Which is where I really want to be, secretly, in the terminal, 72 columns back in 1970. But we've been there. Why is this interesting? Why is this new? You can go and get a commercial solution. It plugs right into Word. OK, you're in the graveyard again. But it'll work, and it's faster if what you've already got is Word documents. What I'm trying to do is make it possible to share. This little code at the top, this is the only piece of technology you really need to understand, to understand how you can share content with lawyers. This little code is like a fingerprint of this entire form. It's what's called a cryptographic hash. 
A hash is just a kind of math puzzle that's really easy to work one way, like 2 plus 2 equals 4, but really difficult to work the other way. If I say 4, what adds up to it? You can say 2 and 2, 3 and 1. Cryptographic hash functions do not work that way. If I give you this big long string, which encodes a number, it is really difficult for you to give me a form in this data language that produces this fingerprint. And it's not just the form, it's every part of it. So for the nerds out there, this is the Git tree model. This is a Merkle tree. This is a hash of hashes, right? So if I change any part of, sorry, this Macintosh technology. So this one starts BFDC. If I change any part, again, awesome terms, the whole fingerprint of the form changes. It's completely different. That makes that code a unique identifier for anyone who has seen this form. I can say, hey, we should use A67, A, A, B, dot, 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 put in a hyperlink on our deal. And you can go through here and fill in the blanks. The date, for example. You can click this button and get a docx. The blanks you filled in never go to my server. I don't want them. Keep your client's name off my server, please. Right? And it's dead simple to drop additional blanks in here. So it's real easy to send this to clients and say, fill it out, especially if all the blanks are at the top. Click the button, you got a docx, you can send it to uh, opposing counsel. They have no idea about all this newfangled nonsense. Um, those things aren't easy to reference. They're big, long codes. That's part of why I know that two forms aren't going to end up with the same fingerprint, because there are just so many possible fingerprints. But what a service like the server that I've written does is let us assign names and versions to things. So here's my version of uh, plain English Startup Incorporation documents. Been beaten to death Startup Incorporation documents. Uh, this is my chance at the hammer. But every one of these is, has a name that's associated with me, so, uh, or I'd rather the project, so Ironside slash bylaws, the first edition, fourth draft, is exactly this form. If I say, here's a link, to this form from this person at this version, I can be guaranteed that when you click that button, either it will fail because I have broken the software again, which is happening less and less frequently these days, or you will get exactly the terms that I want to propose to you. If I give you a password, you can stick stuff on the server. And there's a difference between sticking it on the server and saying, here it is, come up with a fingerprint, give me a link that I can use to share it and saying, here it is, oh, and by the way, I want to associate with that my, with my name. I want to say, that's my perfect set of corporate bylaws, first edition. At that point, it's public. It's published. I can index it. I can give you a search box that says, you want to see every, edition of, every definition of Exchange Act, and they're basically all the same, but there's an amazing amount of variation if you go and say, Edgar. I can do that. I can do that search on the published forms, the things that people have ascribed to their name. There are many, many more forms on the server that are just available if you know that code. And that makes it very possible for me to say, okay, you want to change this. We're off my preferred form. It happens. It's the practice of law. I can save my changes or your changes onto the server, get back that little code, send it to you by email and say, is this what you meant? And I still know when they follow that link, either something's going to go terribly wrong, less and less frequently, or they will see exactly the terms that I have in mind. And they can do the same for me. What does that mean? We can share across practices. As long as you're not typing your client's name or the purchase price or the intellectual property you're tracing or the security that you're d d creating a derivative of, you're leaving those blanks and we can fill those out really easily and actually automatically. We're trading generic forms. Instead of drafting in Word for this specific deal, we're dealing at the level of the, the awesome forms you occasionally get at CLE where someone said, man, the practice really slowed down these last nine months. But all I do is bankruptcy settlement. And I went back and read all of my bankruptcy settlement agreements for the last 12 months and distilled the state of the art. And everybody's like, wow, we should give you like 1,000 CLE hours for this because it's gold. But that happens in a practice maybe once every few years. Here in New York, maybe more frequently if there's a very active bar. But for the most part, we're siloed, right? Because of confidentiality, which is like privacy plus plus, um, we have that structural constraint. So this is an attempt to deal with it. Yes, it's document assembly. That's an altogether exciting. I'm excited about it because I can automate it. And it's open source. You can use it for free. In fact, everything you've seen is open source. You can use it for free. And it makes it dead simple to write other tools. So at the risk of a plug, this took two weeks. You want to do an NDA? I am tired of reading them. You know, and I'm tired of charging for them. 
yes, it was new. I've never seen that one before. Yes, it said pretty much what I thought it was going to say. Yes, there were some interesting stylistic variations, or maybe there was something in there that I hadn't seen before, and that now I'm going to steal in my form. But for the most part, it's a quarter hour that I would rather have back and they would rather not pay for. So build a little service that just lets people pick a form and send it. Fill it out, e-sign, and it's a dead simple to teach software to pack together a docx, put some signatures on it, do some public key so that the server is validating that it saw a valid signature, and send everybody a copy, automated. So it's not that this is a great product. It's that once you have that lower level, where you have software that can talk about contracts in a structured way, it gets so much easier to write, help me not use those terrible old terms, help me make sure I haven't broken my references, my definitions, help me do different formatting options. And we can do that on the web. Um, if normal in your practice area is decimal numbering, kind of uh, like Commonwealth numbering, 1.1, 1.2, 1.7, .1 that kind of thing, you just tell the software, I would like that, please. If you want a title, give it to me. And we'll spit out a docx. So you can use it to pass. Um, that's document assembly. What I'm really interested to talk to people about, to share with people, to work on with other people, is can we find a combination of that document assembly stuff that we know so well for about the last 40 or 50 years, but find a way to make it so that we can actually collaborate as attorneys without just waiting to see, oh, he had something in his merger agreement that I hadn't thought of, or they got to, around to fixing their NDA in response to the federal trade secret legislation before I did. I'd like to speed up how fast that happens. I'd like to make law a little bit more collaborative. So please try to break the tool, commonform.org, see if you can break it. Um, it's one of my favorite pastimes. If you want to work on it, let me know. If you're interested in the forms I've written, let me know. Um, I've had people come to me who are really interested in that kind of what software people call lint program. I am writing and I'm seeing as I go along the obvious mistakes that I've made, that feedback loop which changes the way you draft contracts. I've been doing it about two years and I have this much respect left for my ability to tick all of those boxes and keep all of that, those bad practices out without some kind of automated assistant because I thought I had it down and then the software showed me that I didn't. If that's of interest, if the privacy concerns are of interest, if you want to write a templating system, I've done that on command line, you want to do it in the browser, let's go. But let's get some kind of way that we can advance the state of the art together and we don't use firm or confidentiality and the really real practical implications of dealing with that day-to-day -day and preparing agreements for real clients, let's find a way to unhitch the progress of contract drafting from those structural constraints. That's what I'm after. What so I, I, I'm sorry? What platform is that uh, Because it was destined for the browser, everything is currently in JavaScript. I'm indifferent. It works. Um, Node.js will all run on the command line as well. Currently, yes, but there's nothing computer science-y difficult in there. You need implementation of the hash functions. That's about as low level as it gets. All done? <laughs>